right. Oh, I don't quite like my voice with the microphone. Let's begin anyway. Thank you for coming. This is going to be a family-like talk. And many of you may know who I am. I am Cesar Gallego. I'm an architect at Alviva. And I am Daniel Hernandez, SecOps and Data Engineer at I4S. We are colleagues working in an innovation lab. And we're going to tell you about what we've been doing lately. And I don't know whether you're really fans of cinema. We are. And we are at the cinema, actually, here in Kinepolis. And this weekend, the Oscar Ceremony Awards will be given. And here we're going to tell you about a, a horror story, about a scary story. So when we chose the name for our talk, we were like, OK, so how can we talk about this in a sentence? And we got the inspiration for our title from, uh, from someone who may sound familiar. Okay. So, many of you may know him. He's the great Moff Tartin that appears in the Star Wars trilogy, the good one. Not what they did afterwards, which is kind of crap. And this guy invented doctrine of fear for management. And when they eliminate the Senate, and at a meeting they ask him, how can we, how we're gonna keep the order in the galaxy without bureaucracy? And the, this great guy said, well, fear will keep the systems in line. Fear to the Star of Death they've built, and that fear eliminate the need of of a strong bureaucratic structure in place. So we thought about how can we use that fear to avoid doing tasks that we don't like, that are slow and that are kind of painstaking. Okay, so let's begin with this. Nowadays in software development, we're experiencing a very interesting moment. There's a clear trend of applications to be more distributed and to use instrumentation techniques that are increasingly more modern. One would expect but, that by doing that, the tedious task of reviewing laws would be something like this. You know, something attractive, efficient, silent, cool. But the sad reality when we reviewed the laws is this one. This is divergent, scary. In the place where you get the law, sometimes it's drugs, other times it's a car, sometimes it's in flames. And despite having to, or on top of having to manage all this, you need to look at what could be scaring these laws. This is a guy that scares me here. He's got a spanner in the shooting. He must be really confident. So let's talk about the laws. So, logs are written by humans, and regarding humans who write logs, I like to mention two things. They have a discipline that is different when it comes to writing blogs, and they have a different information context as well. So the guy below, the guy Python, may write wonderful logs, well formatted, that will have the shape you have not been able to connect to port 5432, because even though that guy may be very disciplined, he doesn't have any context of what is done in your company. The guy that may convert it into a log message with true information is the guy on top in your company who has a lot more context and he may say, well, we couldn't store the user preferences. But if he doesn't have a discipline or if he's lazy, he'll just leave the message below. And you're like, okay, so you, there you have no information and loads of problems. So let's talk about monitoring, monitoring today. These guys, launch their logs with different formats and shapes to a central boss. Let's call it Kafka. So all the logs go through there with different features and eventually get to a data lake or to a data so storage, data warehouse. Data lakes are usually more modern with big data with uh, processing capability and that might be useful 
the one to extract the information from these logs. They all have different shapes, which may be tricky. We need to do a ETL for both formats because they share the formats and you may extract information. But in the worst case scenario, you need one for each application, which if you start paying in the back. Once you get that, you feed your monitoring system with aggregates and rules, and everything works perfectly with those aggr aggregates and those rules. It may warn you that something is going on. Although, if that happens, it's going to ignore something and you're not going to detect it. But if everything goes well, this will be your detection time. In everything we do here, the ETL and feeding with the monitoring system, which is like a white canvas, and doing the rules, is the IT tool. It needs a lot of work. You need to do the ATL, do the rules, do the aggregates, keep them under maintenance. If you're failing any of these things, you don't detect it, or if you don't configure it well. The CEO of your company might get a, a memo at 2 a.m. on Saturday, and then you need to send out your CV elsewhere. So once you have a more or less standard detection time, the opposite may happen that you don't detect it, and if you don't, you need to do a post-mortem. And when something bad happens in your system, system you need to go to that slow log system to find out what's happening. And when you do that, you're pretty much dead. Exactly. When this happens, you know, they've gone full throttle into your place, and you might or might not know when you do the analysis. Maybe it will be further ahead when something else happens, or maybe when they realize and publish it, and your reputation is damaged already. And that analysis may take some indeterminate time. You don't know how long it will take because you need to analyze the zillions of logs you've got and stored in that data lake with different structures. And the ETL you've prepared hasn't been able to extract the information you need, and your rules haven't been effective. Therefore, you need to build new rules, a new ETL, and that takes some time and effort, and it bears some cost. So, these IT trolls need to be paid with interest if there's been an attack and you didn't detect it. So, when we do the post mortem, you're already dead. So, there's no remedy. They've gone in, there's no solution. Just to try that they don't do the same thing once again. I don't know about you, but I'm scared of being killed. It's a scary film, and when I'm scared, I run away. Fear keeps me alive. And so far, it's worked. So let's continue with that strategy. But what is fear, actually? Well, fear is not just a letter from the tax office in July. That's not good, but fear is that feeling of there's something going on. And you're like, well, you have a look and you're like, yes, something's happening. So first of all, you get scared and then you have fear. So when it comes to finding fear, we have a split into two components. When we think of fear, we all know what it is, but the machine doesn't know what it is, so we need to teach it. And to teach what fear is to machine, let's begin with this premise, with this basis. There is a component of surprise when you notice something's going on, but you don't really quite know what what it is, you haven't really identified the reason, and and then you look at something, all of a sudden you hear a noise, you freeze and you turn around and you're like, oh, a tiger. So that assessment of the information that you obtain when you turn around gives you some sort of feeling that may be positive or negative. that feeling, positive or negative, is not the only thing you need, because the machine may have it, but we don't want it to be slow. If it's slow, we will get caught. So we are lacking another component, which is efficiency. Our well weapons cannot just be fear and negativity. We're like Kron, and we were at his talk first thing this morning, so we are obsessed with efficiency. So we'll try to make that component into our system. And this is a strategy that we'll follow to build it. We'll need to do some reverse engineering for the monitoring alert system and progress of the log. So let's big, begin. Here we need to do ETLs. That's necessary. But the current ETLs 
are really coupled to the logs for mud. The logs have a full mud, a fat shake has one, the databases have another one, and we need to manage all that. So we need to become independent from that because that has a cost, which are the IT clouds we were mentioning earlier. And if we do independent DTLs from the format, then we have the other side of the DTLs, which is the information they get. And we need to get them to extract information in a format that allows us to test with different models. Right? We, need, we need different TTLs, as few ETLs as possible to try with different models. Why? We want to try different models. Well, this is quite new. Fear is not easy to model, and therefore we need to try different models to check the results they render. On the one hand, for the feeling, or the surprise rather, and on the other hand, for the feeling. And when we get those results, we'll assess them and we'll check which model we we'll keep. So, which is the approach we'll have to try models and then assess them? We'll begin from what simple to what's more complex. Uh, less complex models, more simple, to more elaborated and complex models. Why? Because we don't like the hype. Here is Indiana Jones fighting a machine learning algorithm that takes, takes six or eight hours to train with Google GPUs. And it slices the logs like a machine, but they find a rusty gun that clips it, so it's worthless. So we want that gun. Maybe it's not that cool, but it's sufficient. So how can we talk about data capture without talking about the technologies we have set up? Well, the most popular one is the following. We have a massive logs box. We could call it Kafka, but it's not Kafka. And we have a monitoring system that could be an ANSI search or a Kibana, which is not in this case. So what have we done? We have exported several log groups, some tiny, mid-size, or massive ones, to test. So while we were doing that, we said, OK, we found the perfect place to upload our detection service. We put it here in the middle, in the bus. We get the logs as we get them. And we detect what's going on. OK. So our experiment need to have some basic lines and establish several, several. We said, okay, we want a uh, basic model to define whether there's some sort of anomaly. And then another one, which is paranoid. Everything is anomalous or wrong. Another one is very lazy. Nothing is wrong. And then we use mathematics and we said, okay, we need to do something very simple that renders the results. So we began thinking strongly. And there's an algorithm used for the detection of errors in banking transactions that is quite well known that was our starting point so here's a model that we're talking about let's talk about, ma about mathematics a little bit and we all love them don't we but it will be brief this is Benford's law the ben Benford's law the first digit law states that this first digit here in a set of data that is not random and big enough may be predicted statistically so it appears about 30% of times. This mathematical law is empirical. So the guy who discovered it does not have a formula to explain it. He just has reason and the tests. So Mr. Benford was not the inventor, was another mathematician, but he tested it. He tried it out in banking transaction, in accounting statements, in logarithms, in rivers. And he was met all the time. They've even applied it recently for physical constant laws, basic ones, and this is always also complied with. So let's say a statistic frequency. Non-random things have a statistical frequency. And this happens due to another law called equiprobability. In a set of statistical data with the same probability, they cannot balance out. But once you have a criterion, they don't balance out. They go to different places. That also happens with language. In Spanish, for example, we know that the most frequent letter in a long dialogue is E. But if you want to know that, in a dictionary, that would be the A. Why? Because depending on the usage of the language, there is one or another trend. 
and not just the first letters change, but in fact also the ones that are on table, the less frequent ones, also change. They were different now from the 18th century. And since we write blogs badly because we read literature, there is a statistics frequency that may be detected. So first of all, the ETL that counts the characters in a row, A, B, C, D, parentheses, spaces, and so on. So what do we do with that? We do statistics. So we take all of those histograms and we pile them up, we calculate the average and the standard deviation, and with that, we do what we call the character space. And we will use that later on to see how infrequent is one specific line doing the same thing by counting the characters. This is one part of our total model. As we mentioned, we have feeling, we have surprise and feeling. And that's what we're going to talk about now. He has told us how we moderate surprise with uh, statistic frequencies, but we have to moderate that positive or negative feeling or sentiment that we want to use to detect things that make us feel not so good. The goal of all this is that that of those many logs that get to us through that bus, we want to filter them so that we they only come up those that have something uh, unfrequent or weird. Weird in the sense of negative, something that you have to take a look at. Something, because something that comes up every now and then could be normal, but something that comes up now and then and it's not positive needs to be watched. So how are we going to model that feeling? Well, feeling is different to assess. So everything seems to be going well. You think that there's no travel, and then all of a sudden you realize that's not the case. How come? How do you do that? By analyzing the logs. We've uh, stayed earlier on with the uh, characters of the log content, and now we're going to take a step back and we're going to look at the words. We cannot detect a uh, feeling in each uh, letters and the different characters, but uh, with the word we do, uh, uh, we are able to analyze uh, sentiment. So we're going to do analysis of natural language and we're going to use a library that's called Spacey and we've chosen it because as opposed to other libraries which are available for mm, NLP, uh, this one is very optimized to be used in projects that are going to be used for production. It's programmed in Python, which is uh, it, which optimizes the execution of the code a lot, and it processes very fast. And we want it to be fast so that the flow of logs does not overflow the system's capacity, and we start having a backlog. So, how are we going to do? What are we going to do with the spacing? So far, we're going to. Uh, divide the message in the words, and we're going to store them separately. So each log line is, and we're going to store the words separately. What for? Well, so that each word can be scored and given, given a, a, a score of, of as to um, how positive or negative it is. Uh, based on the information given by the dictionary that have in it previously been scored in that sense. Those dictionaries mm. uh, uh, whether or not you have to just check with experts in the specific context of security we're just using uh, uh, dictionaries that are available in in internet to that are often used for the analysis of social networks for instance in Amazon often to see if it's positive or negative they and give you the review they use that they give you to give you a score so it's a list of words that uh, if it's for instance if the word good comes up then it's positive if it says mistake then it's negative etc so that's what we're going to do to have a general idea of whether it is positive or negative the goal in the long term, or in, or in the middle term, really, is to have a dictionary that contains words that have a, a negative connotation, specifically in the field of uh, security. But so far, we're going to stick to to this dictionary, and we'll see how it works. So, evaluation: what have we evaluated without mm, and being too specific about our results? Because we cannot do that. 
This is the assessment or evaluation that we have got. There is a, a quite a lot of um, fear, but we have assessed each type of model that we've used, for instance, the statistical one and others that we have uh, used uh, um, to as a reference because and and then we have checked with the security expert and we've asked him. How do you feel about this? And he said, this is good, this is bad, this is so-so. Uh, and this was our first uh, assessment. We have tried neural networks to see if we could uh, teach them to detect uh, the infrequency, uh, linear regressions, and we've also tested uh, generating a, uh, and but the improvement of these alternatives was not enough to defeat our reference uh, uh, compared to the time it took, because the time of statistics uh, that we were using was incredibly fast. For instance, the logs of uh, one day and a half of the pre-production uh, environment are dealt with in less than an hour, and there are a lot of them. So with this, uh, taking time into account and and seeing how each model has worked. Are, this is the reason why we decided that the uh, statistics and the uh, sentiment of or feeling one were going to be chosen because we in our department work with the agile methodology. So what's important is to have something very fast that allows you to uh, contribute that value in an iterated way and, and increase that value that way. And this wouldn't have would be meaningless for us if we were not going to use it for our production system. So everything we do is uh, attempts to be useful and to make our lives easier rather than staying in a, in a drawer or in a repository. So as we've said earlier on, we want to link this to the bus, uh, to the log bus to have them, to analyze them. So we have to read that. Uh, log bus and process all that information. We will apply the models that we have assessed or the ones that we have chosen, the ones that have been more effective, but that will be dynamic, will keep changing. The result of the current models could be improved and we will make progress in that direction. On the other hand, what this service is going to provide that, and that you will see now is on the one hand, uh, scoring of the fear detected in the system at this point in time, as Tessa was saying, it takes um, uh, uh, just um, a small part of a second to do so, uh, and uh, and 15 minutes is what it takes. It's 10 megas, and it takes some uh, 10 seconds. And out of those, eight or nine are to do with the Docker image. Because if we sh run that uh, directly in Python, it was even faster. So on the one hand, it's going to have in, in near real t in real time of the fear detected in the system. And on the other one hand, uh, the specific logs uh, that we cannot uh, show you because we've done the tests with production data and, and there are IPs there and, and, and everything and we don't want to get in trouble. But we're going to have those two points of information. And now it's the time of fear. We're going to take the leap of faith. Uh, Cesar will go to, we'll do the demo. We're going to show you something that you can get your hands on. Can you roughly read it? Maybe bigger. So these are the libraries, our fields that I'm going to go over quite quickly. Some embarrassing things over here, but what I want to show you, we have assessed two public uh, dictionaries uh, before doing our own. Uh, because it's a lot of work, and the two dictionaries or lexicons that we have chosen are here. We're going to uh, publish that in GitHub for you to take a look and for you to assess it, and also the service, so that you can execute it. And I encourage you to do it because you get surprising results. We, we, we thought this was not going to work, but we look at the results and 
and we're impressed. So back to the dictionaries, lexicon, and Senti Warner. So there's a lot of data crunch in here. But there is a graph here that I like to discuss in detail. This is the feeling detected in a group of logs. You can see to the left how lexicon is the blue line. It's like uh, hard steps, whereas Senti Warner is uh, more nuanced. So we decided to choose Sandy Warner because that uh, sort of uh, feeling uh, comes earlier, so it allows us to to be warned not when things are really worrying, but uh, but when things begin to feel wrong. So. In, in to the right, in the distribution, you can see how most of the things that uh, score in both are neutral. And that's one of the things we want to change. It cannot be that the feeling of the machine that has to be uh, scared when it sees things to do with affecting security, that it should be neutral. So we have to change the dictionary in that sense. And now we're going to look at something that's really great. Here we can see how uh, po in a positive and negative way. Matched is slightly positive. Request the score is twice slightly positive. W then dead is uh, negative. We don't know why. Uh, normally negative. Uh, I is negative. Uh, um, error uh, is negative. And pit is negative. That's why we want to use another dictionary closer to security. But this is a message from sentiment. And w if we see how lexicon scores it, it gives it a minus one uh, in, in uh, error, warning, and anomaly. So one has a slightly positive and a slightly negative feeling, and the other one is clearly negative. So. We like the one that's uh, earlier in its detection. And the analysis frequency, here we turn things around. And, and this is the character space generated. You cannot look at the characters, so you cannot read them properly. But for each one, it gives you the central point, which is the average. And, and the upper and lower lines are to do with, uh, with deviation. So. When we compare that, what do we do? We get the scoring of the characters and we compare it with the character space. When you have a lot of uh, red points to the upper right and the ones that correspond to the format, because they are the first ones, because they are the more repet repetitive ones, uh, they are not there. So a mess that's clearly anomalous. Here, Mm, this is not anomalous and everything is closer to where it should be. So we have to say how we calculate anomalies. For all those dots that are within the standard deviation, we put a zero there. And those that are outside, we put one, a one. We don't care about the distances so far. We'll see later on. And then for each one of these messages, you're going to get a ride of zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And how do we estimate for that line the percentage of anomaly, we have a, a synthetic indicator, which is the average of those zeros and one, which is always going to be between zero and one. If the message is uh, uh, one, um, that's a huge anomaly. No character is where it should be. If you have an empty line, that uh, it tells you this is a huge anomaly. But if you give them something formatted and with beautiful words and with a date, then it's not striking. Why is uh, so? Why does it like it? Because it has the same format as the other messages. And why do we insist in comparing it uh, with other models beyond it being our uh, baseline? Well, it has a certain dependency on the length of the message. If you have an empty message of uh, an empty message with zero characters, it's going to be very anomalous. But four logs, which, as we've said, are very repetitive and non-random, uh, works very well because if somebody makes a mistake in formatting the logs or sending a message that it shouldn't. Uh, send, uh, or it doesn't capture uh, an exception, well, this comes up very well, and you get very um, peculiar messages of people who are misbehaving all over the place. This is one of the evaluation matrices that we have on the, with those who are in the talk. 
to assess the frequency model about which um, values move, the uh, average, the standard deviation. But this was not enough for, for us. What did we want? We wanted to model fear in such a way that it can be a feeling that it's alive. And so far, we've managed that the machine has a certain resistance to fear if they start seeing uh, anomalous messages, it gets used to them and the threshold, uh, the fear threshold goes up so that it filters a lot more and it shows you only the messages that look really bad to him. So we're going to do a cut of check demo. What are we executing here? Can you see it? So we've dockerized it because everything that's uh, executed in a distributed environment like the one we have should be in, in Docker. We'll give it a name and to simulate the Kafka because it was huge to set up a Kafka uh, for the demo. If you're uh, scared with a container for a, a demo, then uh, imagine with the Kafka. So we're doing it this way. We include the message within the model. And we see what it looks like or what it says. I say hi. Sorry, I've done a cut. It takes a while, and this is because it's uh, starting up all the things that Spicy needs in order to do the synthetic analysis of the word, and that takes a while to wake up the model, and then it tells you how surprised it is to see this line and the feeling. Hola is a neutral, uh, generates a neutral feeling or sentiment, and surprise, 98% uh, anomalous. So you give them a word that uh, they haven't seen often in, in the logs, then it wonders what this is about. If you write, hi, this is longer, it will still be very surprised because if somebody has written, has, uh, written in the bank logs, uh, hi, this is longer, I would be surprised as well. But it hasn't said anything. It takes a while because it's using the backrise the version, and it has to wake up the servers and then read the dictionaries, and, and then it does the assessment. But in the version, that's not. We were modifying the script yesterday, and perhaps something is not uh, uh, working well, but we have here. It takes the logs. It takes them to the computer, describes them in a file, then it formats the results in the standard output, and then it tells you so the total of logs, the ones that they found as uh, anomalous, and the ones that have scared him. This takes some 30, 40 seconds, because we're talking about 15 megas of log. But I don't think it will take a minute to start. We have not shown you the script that does the training, but basically it reads the file, it calculates the character space, it trains the model, and then it allows you to ex execute. And the model changes every time you execute it. So with the data we've given it, uh, fear is quite high because one of the first lines is quite scary. And from then on, the level of fear stays around 95. And how do we calculate the level? Everything that's between 95 and 
and we apply the standard deviation uh, below. It's what we show as anomalous. And with that, we do the sentiment um, uh, scoring. There is a, a worrying word because there is a minus six and another minus six. We filter the words because because of the IPs and that we could not show here. But everything that we're showing here, so out of 13,000 logs, we get 205 that we will have to take a look at, which is about 1%. And that's quite a lot less information to process when an analyst should check if something has happened in the system. OK, we don't have any more time here. We upload the character space. But this is what we have so project, which is a statistics model. Uh, we decided to use this statistic and surprise system because both in execution and training it can they can be done in stream and you can have it in your pipeline of deployment for training and then you can have it in production and the whole statistics that it needs underneath is calculated in in streaming and with that statistic of how scared it is it's how the thing will react later on So what's left? We prepared this uh, for the talk, uh, but we have but we have other plans. There are more things to be done. We want to improve the infrequency detection models to calculate that distance to the average to see what the the how far it is from the standard deviation. Uh, another one is the vocabulary to get data sets that are. Uh, contain uh, that refer to the context of security, but not only security, because we've realized that this can be applied to any context. You can get weird stuff coming from security, but also in, in functional areas, there are key words that if a functional analyst says that this, they realize that they this is not working as it should, and then optimization. That can also make this to make uh, to work faster, and because the volume is huge, and we've tr and there are very heavy architectures that deliver an incredible amount of logs, and the growth is exponential right now. And we also have to say, well, test it. We're going to publish it. This is our, these are our tweets, uh, Twitters. Uh, for us, uh, for you to get in touch with us, and I encourage you to test it because mm, you will find surprising things. We were very struck by what we saw, and this is the like, blog. We are uh, like an innovation umbrella for all the innovation done in the bank, and we do great stuff. We've uh, recently uh, delivered an article from A K A A K K A and. And if you test this, please let us know how it's worked. Uh, your feedback is is very interesting for us. Uh, um, feedback, uh, ideas, or even effort. Uh, all the code uh, we are going to look into, because it goes to the GitHub of the bank, but it's going to be open source. It will, uh, you will be, uh, you will be able to use it thoroughly. And we encourage you to test it, because we believe this has many opportunities, opens up many opportunities, uh, and, and we want you to benefit from that. And, and we won't take any more time, because Chema is waiting uh, for us until we're done. He cannot start his talk. So thanks very much. Questions? OK. We're going to make a draw in the other room. It will be shown here uh, through streaming. Uh, uh, do the speakers also uh, get to, to participate? If you've registered, yes. But you are.